All right. It is, thank you, Tim. It is tax day, by the way. Check this out. If you make under 200000 a year, there is a less than 1% chance of an audit. But those making between $1 and $5 million a year, that audit opportunity goes up to 9%. And for those of you making $10 million or more, you know this. You're audited nearly 25% of the time. So is the tax man specifically targeting the rich, or is there some sort of devious political agenda at hand here? Let us welcome in former commissioner of the IRS, Charles Rosati, author of Many Unhappy Returns, as well as tax expert Dan Mitchell, senior fellow at the Cato Institute. Charles, what say you? I mean, I guess it's like Willie Sutton. You just got to go where the money is, right? That's, it. That's like any auditing. Follow the money. You know, if you were auditing a corporation with a lot of subsidiaries and one of them made half the money, you'd audit that one a lot more than the little ones. Same thing with tax returns. Yeah, I mean, should we view that then, Charles, as politically motivated, monetarily motivated, or it just doesn't pay to audit a bunch of people who may be wrong on their taxes by 50 bucks? Well, it pays to audit everybody a, a little bit so nobody thinks they can get, just get away with not paying their taxes right. But obviously, if you're making, uh, let's put it this way, that people making over a million dollars a year are only uh, three out of every 10,000 returns, but they owe 20% of the taxes. So if you were auditing, wouldn't that be where you would spend it, more of your time? It makes perfect sense, Dan. I mean, this is all about return on investment with limited resources, the IRS and all government. You want to spend the money and the time, the more bang for your buck, so to speak. Historically, we've always had much higher audit rates for rich taxpayers, so there's nothing objectionable about that. But that doesn't mean the IRS doesn't sometimes have a political agenda or sometimes get corrupted by its political masters, as we saw with the whole Tea Party targeting scandal. But I don't think that we're seeing you know, some specific devious plot to go after rich people, because after all, when the IRS goes after them, they're going up against some very well-trained uh, tax lawyers and tax accountants, and these rich people are quite capable of defending themselves. So I think it's just the same thing we've seen for decade after decade. We have but, but, a very complicated tax system, and people fight over are it. Are we looking at it the wrong way, right? Let's flip it. Let's just say, well, they're getting audited because they're rich. Maybe they're getting audited because they're complicated. A lot of rich people also have the most complicated returns because they've got capital gains, they've got 27 businesses over here and whatever. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's not the money. Maybe it's the complication. Dan. I certainly agree with that. I mean, you compare our internal revenue code with the 75,000 pages of law and regulation. You compare that to what they've had in Hong Kong, a simple flat tax for more than 60 years, uh, where everyone uh, who pays taxes can do it themselves with no complications whatsoever. It's a territorial system. Right. There's very little double taxation of saving and investing. Sure. That's what we should do just Guys, for growth. we got to leave it there. Thanks so much for your time, Dan and Charles. Thank you.